I again to start this show because we but to talk to her because we had started a conversation already a little bit and um now we we, we, we got to get go into a full circle because it is very important to like i said not to worry about your physical health but to also worry about your how, how would you say it dental Wor- health dental there you go i don't know I'm, I'm i'm always trying to come up with these big words for <laughs> But definitely you want to worry about your dental health. You worry about, and then again, that's also part of your physical health, but most people don't think about that. So I want to, um, you all to help me welcome again. She's been all over, um, I know she's been all over internet radio, and um, she's got commercials. She's been on Channel 19. She's got, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I, I, don't, I always consider her a celebrity myself. But <laughs> she... <laughs> For, for for her humbleness, I appreciate that. But um, I definitely think that she is somebody worth talking to. Again, definitely worth supporting. So I want you to help me welcome. Again, she's live in the studio with me and has a lot of great information to share. The one, the only, I'm home. I want to make sure I have it. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's that? Where's that? Oh no, I can't find it. Ah, there we go. Because I, 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 I my, you live in the studio. It'd be different if you was on the phone, but you're live in the studio, so I gotta make sure you have it. Help me welcome live in the studio here at Who Asked Fire Radio Network, Doctor Hyatt Ali. Yeah. How are you, Charles? Um, first of all, I want to tell you happy birth birthday. Yeah. And Joy Ruffin, also happy birthday. Yeah. Um, and I want to introduce my new commercial that will go out um, on February. Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody's already calling me. <laughs> oh, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh-oh, somebody else is calling in. Let's see. We're going to answer this call. Let's call. Um, welcome to the Cleveland Inspiration. Uh, yeah, welcome to Cleveland Inspirations. Hello? Hi, were you call? Yes, were you calling? It- <laughs> were you calling it to um, just listen or were you calling it to um, speak to Dr. Ali? Yes, sir. She's live on the air. <laughs> Say hi, Dr. Ali. Hello, Mokman. Thank you for calling in. Good. Hope all is well. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, we got to get into the interview because uh, we just started the interview. So um, if you would like to call back in, um, definitely, I tell you what, if you can go to Mixler.com, M-I-X-L-R.com forward slash WHTP Radio Network and listen or go to our website, www.whohaspowershow.com you can listen to the show there as well you're welcome <laughs> I, t- I told you uh oh hold on hold on hold on hold on okay there we go I must say I knew you was a p- sort of celebrity people calling in already <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> uh... the show didn't even get we just started the interview and already you got two phone calls <laughs> you know what can I do I love my uh, friends, family, great patients. Right. And, you know, again, let, let's get back. We're starting a new commercial that's going to air in February. Thank you, Joey Ruffin. You did a great job. Let me see. Cause I know, I know hey. what you're here. No, I'll tell you what. Yeah, do me a favor. Because <laughs> you had to come up to the microphone. Come oh. up to the microphone. Hello. There you go. You, Is that better? You feel better? Yeah, maybe. Okay, <laughs> let me try this again. And thank you for having me. Uh, right. Thank you for having me, Charles. You know, there's a lot to, to talk about, but what do you want to hit on? Let me see. Let's, t- let's turn that off. Okay. How about that? Let's see. That's better. Oh, okay, that's better? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think because we got most, multiple microphones on at the same time. Okay, there you go. Just speak to the microphone. That's cool. 
Cool. All right, here we are. You better? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What would you like? I have two offices. See, I was looking around. It's still? Hold on. Okay. No, no, no. You, you cool. You cool. Honestly, I promise you. Because Joey, I'll put his way. Uh, yeah. Cause yeah, Joey's still, Joey's listening. I tell you what, if you all listening, you all hear any technical difficulties or you all are, it's, it sounds kind of slow, let us know. I know Joey's listening. And he said, thank you, Dr. Ali, because he got, <laughs> he appreciates Got the shadow out. Yeah. Um, okay, I have two offices. Joey says it's great. No. Oh, really, Joey? <laughs> Thanks. I feel like I have a leg. Okay. Um, I have two offices on the west and the east in Mena. Uh, I would like everybody to come that hasn't been in at least six months to come and get their teeth checked out. Most people wait till the end and when they're in their pain. And at that time, they're already tense, frightened, and maybe even have an infection. Uh, but we want them to come before when I can diagnose and do simple fillings or just a simple cleaning instead of when people are in extreme pain. Right. I'll tell you, okay, yeah, we, we, we yeah, I'm, you're fine, <laughs> it feels we definitely be, be in the studio, but no, um, as we, we, as we're talking about, oh, yeah, he said, thanks to all the actors for the commercial shoot, yeah, not to mention all, some of those people look familiar, if you had, if you've never seen the stage play, Stay Alive, How Not to Come a Victim, then you probably don't know who those people are, but I do! <laughs> Like, hold on, that person looks very familiar. <laughs> okay, no. Um, uh, oh, yeah, and a matter of fact, if you go to our, if you go to do, um, our Mixler app, oh, I'm sorry, if you go to Mixler.com forward slash WHTP radio network, um, Joey Ruffin is in the, in the chat room. He just put a link up to the commercial, so that way you can go see Dr. Ali's commercial. I was going to talk about that a little bit later, because you said it's on a lot of channels, which unfortunately I do not watch, but... <laughs> He's going to start watching. Well, first of all, I watch it doing, when sports is on, I watch it. With no yeah. sports. <laughs> Don't disappoint me. I'm going to, look, I promise you, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch, I'm going to say, oh! I'm going to watch it at least once, and once I see it, I'm going to see your message on Facebook. Hey, Dr. Lee, I saw it. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, because I want to really get this out, because like I said, we had somebody on from the Cuyahoga Health Access Partnership, and we talked about, again, white people. No, as a matter of fact, when you mentioned what you just said, people don't go to the dentist like they're supposed to, and unfortunately, when they get there, it's too late. You know, they're either at denture stage or they're what? You know, I'm going to say, yeah, you, they're at the pulling stage. You got to pull the teeth out, and then by then, you at Crown was I don't God I'm not a dentist but I know if you wait too long you'll end up with no teeth and then you have to decide you have to worry about you know like I said getting dentures and all that kind of stuff so first of all like I said we want to talk about the um we want to talk about your practice but let's talk about the dental first why is that people that you've seen or that you heard why do people not go to the dentist. First of all, a lot of people don't have dental insurance, mm -hmm. but thank God to Mr. Obama, he's giving a, a lot of dental insurance out. Right. Um, like Medicaid, more people are getting on it, and they have care source, different programs, and... People should take advantage. Once they get any of these dental insurances, they should run to the dentist, not even walk. Like you said, most people, and then they just put it off. If it is not broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. If they're not in pain, you know, they they don't think it's necessary to go to the, the dentist. Right. And then, unfortunately, again, I tell you, what, if you feel better, just take the headphones off. 
That way. <laughs> there you that go. Sounds like a big line. Yeah, like, there you go. No, you okay. Right, it's okay. We're live on the air. No, you cool. You cool. This is, I said, this is real radio. This is not, oh my goodness, <laughs> telling you. You might want to put your headband phone back on now because somebody just called it again. Let's see. We're going to go. Let, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, don't, oh, don't answer it. 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 Don't Oh, maybe this is better with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what I really want to hit on the importance of going to the dentist. It really is. Um, and Joey knows that. Um, I said, speaking of that, Joey just put there, put in the um, chat room. He said, Dr. Ali has been taking very care of my dental health and my smile is brighter than ever. What a, I mean, who better to promote? Joy awesome. <laughs> yes, like Joey hasn't been to a dentist in a long time. And he finally, like, I think he felt comfortable with me knowing, you know, just being a Facebook friend. We mm -hmm. became friends through Laura Collin. Um, you know, like, he felt like he knew me somehow. And he came, he got up the courage, and, you know, we're, we're getting him straight. Joey was lucky where his wasn't so severe, but what, what I'm seeing mostly is... People come in, and as you said, we can't even save the teeth. We have to take the tooth out, give them dentures. But people don't realize nothing is like your original teeth. Right. Uh, you know, dentures aren't a solution. It helps, but it's really not. You can't eat with them as well. They're, they're always going to be loose to some extent. Uh, you can't taste your food as you do with your natural teeth. So that's why I really encourage people to go and get their teeth checked, cleaned regularly. Right. Um, you know, as I said, we could catch things. If you have problems small, then when it's a big problem or it's end stage. And you got to remember also people with periodontal disease, gum disease and all that, it leads to diabetes, it leads to heart problems. And a lot of, um, at the Cleveland Clinic, they won't do any surgeries, especially heart or transplants without getting your mouth totally cleared by a dentist. Wow. And you don't want it where I'm pulling everything out. You want to come, and I do take walk-ins anytime. I take mostly all insurances, and uh, we do not judge. Most people are afraid that we, we will judge them. We do not. You know, we're just happy they're there, and we will take care of them and make them feel like family when once we... Um, have them in our chair. We're trying to make them comfortable. We, we make them laugh and we fix and even maintenance. You know, we want people just to come and get things checked out early on. Well, I honestly, I can't disagree with you and, and I don't want to call them out, but I will say when I went to the dentist, I felt like, oh my goodness, these people are going to rain me because, you know, you just, I mean, it's like, Depending on who the person is, you got to be a good judge of character. And when I sat there and I'm looking like, okay, I know I've been here in a while. And you can just tell by the way people look at you. It's like, oh, my goodness. Absolutely. That's, you know, and I feel a lot of people as they come in, mm -hmm. you know, they make little comments that like they think I'm going to judge them. And the first thing I tell them, listen, I'm not here to judge you, but I'm going to fix you. Uh, you know, you're here now and that's all that really matters. Right. Um, you know, I do not pass judgment, me or anybody in my office. When we see you, if you come five years later, ten years later, you came in, we're just going to help you. Right. We do not put you down, give you looks. Uh, we're just going to make you feel as comfortable as possible. And I think that's very important. I think that's a lot of people um, feel like the dentist is going to judge them. Right. Not only that, and again... Let's, let's talk about, this gets kind of the physical issues. Like I said, some of the setbacks or ways that can hurt us. Because you mentioned already, and me personally, I I like to eat. And at the point that you said my food is not going to taste the same. You know, Absolutely. I mean, kind of, kind of explain that. Because people say, okay, well, so you say it's not going to taste the same. But what do you mean? What affects that? Well, because an upper denture, if anybody knows, it covers the roof of the mouth. Mm-hmm. And that's where your taste buds are. You know, people like don't get the full effect of tasting the food. Mm -hmm. 
And then you have this big arch around the roof of your mouth. Uh, and then on the bottom, you have like flanges where your tongue is. And you just don't get the full effect and the ch full chewing forces as you do with your natural teeth. But you mentioned, again, and what was important, because most people, when you hear the word taste buds, you think the tongue. But you said there are taste buds on the top roof, of your mouth, yeah. on the roof of your mouth. And yeah. most people don't... I, I put it, personally, you just <laughs> educated me because I was always thinking, you know, because I, I was always thought you always brush your tongue, brush your tongue. You got to brush your tongue because a lot of bacteria, mm -hmm. you know, some people have like hairy tongue. Like, you know, we have little stuff on our little tongue. Right. And people tend to attract things on their tongue. Mm -hmm. We tell even people to brush their gums. Um, you know, like some people just brush their teeth and sometimes the food goes to their gums. Like people have bad breath, whatever, and that's when we tell them to brush their tongue because the tongue attracts a lot of um, a lot of bacteria, a lot of food. And that's why we tell people to floss because mm -hmm. like just brushing doesn't hit all of the um, surfaces of the teeth. Mm -hmm. When we eat, uh, food goes in between the teeth. Right. And when we're brushing, the brush only hits the outer surface, inner surface, but doesn't get in between. Mm. So every night, especially at night, I mean, people say two, three times floss after every meal. But I know most people don't floss at all, so I really stress at night. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is a lot of people do not floss, and what's happening is people are getting cavities in between the teeth. That's how they're starting. And people can't see that because it's like in between. Like we catch it on the x-ray. Um, we catch it on the x-ray. And what happens is people don't realize they have a cavity. And it grows and grows and grows because they haven't gone to the dentist for a minute. It keeps growing till it hits the nerve. Right. Once it hits the nerve, you're going to be screaming in pain. Mm. Then... You'll be calling me at all sorts of hours of the night. <laughs> and they don't, they, they didn't realize, oh, they had a cavity. That's right, because they didn't see it. It's in between the teeth. Right. And that's why we take the x rays, is to see in between the teeth mm -hmm. so we can catch it when it's small. And again, that's why it's important to floss. And a lot of people have gum problems. And that's from flossing, wow. lack of flossing, because the bacteria gets in there, in there, in there, and. Um, the bone just resorbs over time. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we have to take out the teeth because there's no solution. The teeth become loose. Right. So what, what's good about the cleanings is we get all the food in between the teeth out. Right. And <clears throat> we take all the food outside. You know, we take it, we clean everything, and we try to salvage the bone, the gum, the tissue, and we keep your teeth as long as we can. Right now, I guess is it, first of all because I want to. I guess we kind of go on a, somewhat of a progression because it all starts off when you're younger. You know, you don't want to wait till you get older start worrying about your dental health. In the case of young people, let's say you know toddler age, when it's when I say when they start stretching, you need to go to the doctor. You need or you need to take your children to the dentist. How often do you see youth coming in with these issues? Actually, there's a lot of kids with so many problems. You know, the bottle, tooth decay. People give their child the bottle. When they come, like at starting at two years old, you'll see all their front teeth that are black. Mm. Um, you know, over time, you know, people, we talk about it, we talk about it, and we say we're not going to see it anymore, but it's still rampant. Rampant right. decay in children. The parents can't monitor children 24 hours so they are eating the candy they are drinking the soda mm -hmm. and they all have decay but what like i try to stress to my patients is bring your kids when they two when they have all their baby teeth in we get them started we give them the fluoride treatment mm -hmm. so their teeth are strong so they grow up with a good system and not afraid of the dentist to actually have a love for a dentist and we try to encourage these parents to bring in their children regularly is six months right so we can if anything as i said small and we can maintain it and we do give the fluoride treatment so they don't have the cavities and i notice people who 
parents who brought their kids early on, their kids never really have cavities because of the fluoride treatments. Right. I say I know me my son person. I think he just saw it. He just saw the dentist. <laughs> he sees at least. He said now you said every six months because I know my son sees sees the dentist um, once a year. We recommend every six months. Okay. That's, That's for everybody. Every six months. Some people need it every three months. The adults. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the the average is every six months. Right now, again, in, in when you mention the bottle, because some people say, "Well, put this way, there's." Two different types of feedings. I know there's some mothers that breastfeed their children, even after a little bit longer than others. But then, like you said, the bottle. What? What's that problem? In your opinion, from a medical standpoint, when should a child stop drinking from a bottle? That I don't know per se. You know, I'm not. I'm not a mother. But all, all I'm saying is, I wouldn't give it to them while they're sleeping. Okay. Because the bacteria lingers in the mouth for eight eight hours. It depends how the child sleeps. So all the sugar is just in the grooves of the teeth. Okay. I would give water. Okay. I'm going to say now I think that, that probably is a better question. Because um, <clears throat> some people do use that as a means of putting their child to sleep. Right. They'll give them a bottle and say, okay, well, go to sleep. But then right. they never go back in and check on them. And take the bottle out of the crib, and like you said, there either one or two things that happen there. It'll just sit in their mouth, and then they'll wake up in in the middle of the night, and they'll just start sucking on the bottle. It's like, okay, that's going to keep them sleep. But you're saying that well, that all has sugar, like milk has sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Some people use like Kool Aid. That's all sugar. Right. So the, this is staying in their mouth for eight hours. So it's just eating at the teeth. Right. This is the problem. It's not so much it's the bottle. It's what's in the bottle. Right. And it's all sugar, and it's just staying for eight hours on the teeth. And, again, you mentioned that, and I've, again, I am I can't speak, you know, I'm only going from what I've heard, but even with the Kool-Aid, because at a certain age, they shouldn't be drinking Kool-Aid anyway, right? Or wouldn't be... You know, I can't tell people what to do and not to do. But see, but now again, but that's why we have you on here because some people say, well, I don't care. I don't have nothing else in my house, so I'm just going to give them what well, I can. Well, okay, well, the thing is, it's a matter of brushing. Like I tell people, okay, they're addicted to pop. Well, pop's not good. Well, after you have that pop, go and brush your teeth. Mm-hmm. That's the important part because, like, if we don't brush our teeth after a meal or, or the drink, the food just... Or the drink or the sugar sits on the teeth. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem comes. Right. I mean, you get what I'm saying? It's not really what you're eating, what you're drinking. I can't tell anybody what eat or drink. But this is, we got to brush after. Right, but I'm saying. Like they say, brush after every meal. Right, but I'm talking in regards to our youth. And again, our young people, like I said, the parents aren't there to monitor. But then in the um, event, like I said, they're drinking milk and then they have the juices. But then you have some of the juices and stuff that have high fructose corn syrup and they have exactly. high sugar levels, but these the parents are given to their children like, oh, well, as long as I water it down a little bit, you know, that should be okay. But is that okay to give a, say, one or two-year-old juice or Kool-Aid that has high fructose corn syrup and all that salt? I mean, sugar I don't agree it. with all that because it has a high sugar content. Um... You know, we try to preach, but people, you know, like from a dental standpoint, you know, we tell them it's not good. It's not good. I mean, there's other alternatives. Right. They just have to discipline their children and give them drinks without sugar. Right. We see, and that's why I kind of, because we, you, you asked yourself, well, how are we going to go about this? Like I said, we definitely want to talk about um, your business, but I really want to get into dental health because as a from a child, if you don't if you don't have your children going to see the dentist when they're younger, as they get older, they won't they still won't want to go see the dentist. And then they get to an adult, and then they get to a job, and they say, "We well, need to go see a dentist." Well, I ain't never seen a dentist in my life. You serious? And then now, like I said, this when the dental health is so far gone, it takes extreme measures or surgeries or whatever. And then now here it is. You're not even what 50, 60, I guess that would be the normal age for dentures or whatever, if not older. And then again, I saw, I mean, I, let me ask this. 
what's the oldest client that you have that still have all their teeth? All of their teeth is hard. Most people do. Oh, you know what? I have God bless her. She's 80 years old. She's been my patient now for 10 years. No, like since 98, 99. Mm -hmm. Pretty much she has all her teeth. At 80? Yeah. Wow. And she's doing really good. You know, she takes care of herself. Educated lady. Um, Has dental insurance. But she really values her teeth. Right. Like really, really values them and wants them. I and mean, that was her goal. Right. And see, that's what I say. That's what's most important. Because like I say we've got to go to commercial. Well, she's going to go to commercial break. But that's very important to, um, That I, that's why I ask that. Because people think, oh, well, once you get to a certain age, they all going to fall out anyway. But that's not that's a not guarantee. True. Not true at all. You can keep your teeth for the rest of your life if you take care of them. Wow. Absolutely. But unfortunate people don't make time for it. Like a lot of people don't have insurance and they always think the dentist is expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. You know, like I charge $80 for cleaning, exam, and x-rays. Mm -hmm. What's that once a year or twice a year in the big picture of our spending habits? I'm going to say, well, I'll tell you, when I went to a dentist, they were talking way more than 80 bucks. But i tell you what, we're going to... I try talking. to make it affordable so people can come. I'm not out to be a millionaire. I'm out to help people right. make it affordable and just to get their dental health and gear. Right. Well, I tell you what, we're going to go to a commercial break when we come back. We're going to talk to um, Dr. Lee more about dental health. We're going to get more back into her practice because, again, with Jory Ruffin, Jory Ruffin, again, if you have, you know, if you don't know about Man Cry Productions, you can go to mancryproductions.com. <laughs> I just get free promotion out everywhere. Go to mancryproductions.com and uh, check out Joey Ruffin. But he mentioned as well um, what Dr. Ali has done for him. And we definitely don't want people to get too far in their life without you know what I'm saying, getting their dental health together. But again, we'll talk more with her. And of course, if you want to call in, because we had a couple of people call in, if you have any questions or comments with Dr. Ali, feel free to call in area code 330-752-2771. That's 330-752-2771. But this is Cleveland Inspirations. I'm your host, Mr. Yancey. We'll be right back. That's better without uh, the. Yeah. I don't know. It, it was like a very delayed effect, and it sounded like I was drunk. <laughs> well, I could hear on my end, it didn't sound like that. But then again, I don't know. I'm going to go. It's, it's usually don't sound like that. It's weird. Yeah, but, I sounded like, I swear, like I was drunk. Like yeah. like a slurred effect. Right. I, 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 could, I understand what you were saying. <laughs> but no, I, it actually sounded fine. Because Joey listened. He said it sounded fine on his Oh, name. really? Yeah, so he it's said not it sounded was great. That's ah, what he said. I swear I sounded like I was drunk. Like, you know, like slur. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you hear it. You said you heard it. Yeah, I heard a little bit. But no, that's why I asked if Joey, <laughs> Joey said it sounds fine. There you go. Wait, you can show about it and then you can ask him. No, everything good. Did you talk a Huh? Wait, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. So what about the... Um... Is everything like the... You hear good? I took this off because I sound slurred. I so sound like once, I'm drunk. Once he yeah, like check, you're not supposed to touch this no more. Like you, you shouldn't have to check. I can't like, so don't take, don't mess with those. So don't I definitely don't mess with those, because that changes the sound. So and then, if, if 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 Mike two, three, or four needs to be go up more, what he should touch? Them, them down there. But not the, not remember not the first one. No, yeah, that, that's for well, this one. Okay, so this two, three, or four. Yep. Okay. So what I do is I do this. Uh, what I do is I do this. I, I do this and then I... Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That will work for me, so... Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't. She I, said she I, like she was drunk. But I don't know what the hell, I don't know how that happened, but... You don't um, feel that? I mean... No, I, I, I heard... Used to it. Used to it. No, I'm not used to it because it was something else. I heard, I heard something different. Yeah, so we heard that too. Mm. Yeah. I told you, what, what was that? The echo you were talking about. Yeah, no, because yesterday, if you go back and listen to the show from yesterday, so you it said, was fine. Okay, so that's just how we heard it in here. At the time. Yeah, like I said, if you go back and listen to the show, I'm it was really, fine. Need, um, go back and listen to the we show. We can download it too, right? Um, that, I don't think, because cause the way it's available. 
No, is it available on the HTWHTV website or just on Mixler? It's on. It's available on Mixler. You can't listen to our. We can't listen to our, No, you can't listen to archive on uh, Mixler. Only on Mixler. Right. You can't, you can't listen to our website. No. Well, oh, yeah, before my phone right. dies. Well, Mass possibly. Can you take my warm picture here. Like I'm gonna look cool. <laughs> my uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So I'll post it on my Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> I have a, I have a good, fi- you know, don't like, uh, huh? You should take it from this way, you turn this way. Oh, okay. You see the official equipment. I'm going to say, we already come back from commercial. Y'all don't ever take that picture. <laughs> you, want, you, want Mr. Yance, you want Mr. Yance to be in the picture? Or? Yeah, I mean, you could get him. Um, if you're going to lean, come back a little bit so you get the mic in. Yeah. Like that good? That's kind of too close to the mic. And we are back right now. We're in the middle of a photo shoot. Dr. Ali is taking pictures in the studio. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> and look, and I guess any, everybody in our circle does that. Um, Laura Coward does it. Joey does it. Everybody's just taking pictures. Everywhere we go, it's like snap, 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 snap. Oh, shoot. I am doing an interview. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. We, as we were saying, now, Mike, we talked about the young people, and um, again, we, we definitely talked about how important it is for young people, again, from, and because and, I don't have the exact term, because I know they told me, the doctors told me, but how soon should children start seeing a dentist? I tell them to, because they have their full uh, set of BB teeth in, for the most part. Mm-hmm. That way, you know, they're old enough to sit in the chair. Mm-hmm. They're afraid. They're going to cry a little. You know, it's a new experience. But I tell the parents, okay, let them cry. Once they see, we're not going to hurt them. It'll take once, twice, two visits. But they're going to eventually get comfortable and say, wow, this is actually cool, you know. Mm-hmm. And they develop a relationship with their dentist and with right. the staff. And that way, you know, when we do cleanings, it's actually fun. Mm-hmm. We polish the teeth for them. We paint the fluoride. We give them a toy. You know, positive reinforcement. You know, we try to give them, you know, like, this isn't going to hurt. You know, we love you here. You're cool. <laughs> you know, we're just cleaning them. Look how Uh-oh. white they are. So oh, don't pay attention to the fact that I got this really sharp animal. <laughs> With little kids at two, we don't try to do that. We just try to polish them and right. remove any plaque on the teeth. And it tickles. Oh, okay. Well, so t- as they're growing older, you know, they, you know, they love coming to the dentist. Well, my dentist doesn't hurt me. You know, I'm, I'm going to get tickled. They paint something on. This is cool. And it builds up good habits. Right. Well, i tell you what. Um, Mikael Nube, um, again, host of Synergy of Life, Holistic Health and Waters Radio, he said he has a question. Sure. Come on down. Good evening to the universe this evening. <laughs> <laughs> man, this, you say that for Thursday, man. Right. Ask your question. All right. So how long have you been in the practice? I, st- I graduated since 1996. I practiced with a very nice gentleman for when I graduated, and he taught me a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always good to have a mentor when you first graduate. Right. Uh, this, this, the reason why I And asked... then I opened my office and mentor in 1997. Okay. This, I just asked um, how long you've been in the practice. This is my question. Uh, this generation of children coming up, um, life expectancy is shorter than their parents or grandparents. <clears throat> Based on lifestyle diet, they've been taught to eat. So with the children teeth you see today, because, you know, that's the first thing children is offering, and the most they are offering is candy. So. And pop. Yeah, yeah, true. And so with and that, also um those energy drinks. Right, right. Create a lot of decay. People think they're good mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they quench your thirst, mm-hmm. but they destroy teeth. So statistically speaking, in the practice now, maybe versus um, fifteen, twenty years ago, 
Are you seeing the condition of children teeth worse than it would be maybe 20 plus years ago? I think the same. When we graduated, they're like, oh my God, there's going to be no tooth decay. Mm -hmm. uh, people are going to take care of their teeth, everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what you mean by children. Like, like, what age are you looking at? Like, like from, the, from two to maybe 12. Would you say this generation... Um, I would say they're the same. They're really? about the same, yeah. Well, that's true, yeah. I, I, I would say the same, but the problems arising, what I'm noticing in the little bit of the teenage years, I don't know if you guys talk about this, but drugs is playing a big <clears> issue. <throat> in my mentor area, um, we see a lot of meth mouths. Mm. Young, I mean, I take out teeth, full mouth extractions on people 17 and 18, giving them dentures. Wow. You know, it's just lost hope. I mean, they're so decayed where I cannot even save or begin to save them. Mm. Uh, what about diabetics? Diabetics have a lot of gum problems. Mm -hmm. You know, because they don't go, they don't go, they're a diabetic, so it's like a stem of cell things. Mm -hmm. And the body, I think, does not fight as well when you're a diabetic. Oh, no. The immune system Your is, immune is, system is down. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. once you already have a small problem, then you become a diabetic. It just mm -hmm. kills mm -hmm. it. Then that's why they need their teeth out. You know, their teeth become loose. But people who maintain, maintain, and become a diabetic, mm -hmm. they'll still have their teeth. Mm -hmm. I, 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 but it's harder for them to fight infection, I see, like dentally. Right, right. Their teeth are a little bit more loose. Mm -hmm. That's why we're stressing why we're here is to come early on mm -hmm. and get your teeth maintained. So do most people come to in your practice as well? after the damage is done versus prevention absolutely uh mm -hmm. prevention in my offices seem to be a little bit small it's all pain mm -hmm. they're in pain they know where dr ali is mm -hmm. and you got to take me immediately dr ali i'm in pain I'm, you know everybody comes in when they're in pain and if you notice my couple commercials are geared for that mm -hmm. you know like a lot of people that come to my office you know i was up all night your commercial came on mm -hmm. Like, where have you been? <laughs> you know, it's fine. I don't tell them that. But um, it, it's the idea of people coming when they're in pain. Even like 50% people with insurance do not even go to the dentist. That's the statistics. And that's sad. All right. Well, hold on. Look. See, y'all just made this a whole family affair. Wow. This is the Synergy of Light takeover. This is the Synergy of Light takeover. How you gonna take over? It's not Thursday. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Don Blake Jr., you got a question? Yes. Um, what are some of the, of the, or just name one bizarre case that you had experienced with uh, your line of work? A bizarre case? Mm -hmm. I, I, I told this on Tina Hobson's um, radio show. Radio show. Mm -hmm. So let me say it again. I placed an implant in a gentleman and I. Gave him specific instructions. The guy did everything but what I told him. Oh, wow. And, you know, he was blowing and blowing and blowing. And I, I didn't get why. And I'm a big guy, like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, just kept blowing. And the implant went right, shot through, and went right to a sinus. Mm. Had to get it surgically removed. It um, took like a two-hour surgery. But that's... One of the scariest, the weirdest thing I've seen. Wow. That scared me. Um, but thank God it's resolved. No problem. We're still, you know, he's still my patient. Um, but what I'm seeing is a lot of abscesses. Mm. Hard control. Like, they're very hard controlled abscesses. Right. And, <clears throat> and possibly just with, for those who are listening, you have to explain what that is. Because somebody said, well. Oh, an abscess is like a infection. An abscess can be anywhere, but I'm talking about tooth abscess. And I mean, what, how, what, how do what you... happens is, like, again, maintenance. Like, so the decay, the cavity goes, travels, travels to the middle of the tooth. That's where the nerve is. The nerve hits. And in the beginning, it hurts a little. Then it might die down because the body always wants to help itself. Mm -hmm. So the, the nerve is, like, shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. 
and okay well I'm not in pain anymore the nerve is just dying quietly and all of a sudden well this is bacteria this is bad stuff so what happens is it swells in your gums mm. and, that one, and that's uh, when you see uh, the big swelling above your tooth Sometimes it comes out out of your gum, and sometimes it just maintains in inside, and uh, and then that's when you need to get to a de- well. Either way, you need to run to a dentist. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's so uncontrolled that I have to send them to the ER, and they have to pump IV penicillin into them wow. to get it controlled. Wow. Well, <clears throat> must say, you got, you got another question. No, I was I was saying like well people that uh, had diabetes well I'll talk about the people that I know that have diabetes and they go to the dentist the gums kind of like like the the skin part wow. the tissue yeah t- the tissue the it gums, will break yeah. it breaks easy now I might be mistaken it doesn't break easy what happens is it it's it's like gingivitis gum disease mm-hmm. because if they have plaque or the calculus you know the hard stuff because they haven't gone. It's so swollen, the gums, the teeth become loose because the bone is shrinking more rapidly than the normal person. I'm talking about when the teeth is already gone. What happens to the gums? Like, the, the gums get weaker. Now, this is, I, I know people that has diabetes and that happen. Even when they brush their teeth, they can't brush hard. Like, because the skin, I mean, the she, tissue will break. It's just people who don't take care of themselves. Right. Yeah, so, I, I, I haven't seen that. Turn your microphone on. <laughs> And they won't come to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, with diabetics, it's hard to do a lot of stuff with them. Like, we can't put implants in them because right, right. it doesn't respond as well. Um, I yeah, I don't know about breaking. Once you remove the teeth, what happens is the gum forms around the bone. It might resorb quicker than the normal. You know, the bone just keeps going quicker. But maybe, I haven't seen that. Mm. But maybe, I All right, I got one more question. Sure. What's, what's your nationality? I'm Palestinian. Okay. I am from Palestine. I was born and raised here. I was born in Boston. My mm. parents came in the late 60s to Boston, and they had me. Oh. I was <laughs> their first child. You was the sixth person in the last month from Connecticut. I said Boston. I, yeah, I know that's okay. close though. Cloudy, yeah, close. yeah, right. Close. It's yeah. kind of close there, so um, they'll come around from that area. So, wow, all right. <laughs> yes, there's a big Palestinian community here in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. On the west side. On the west side, yes. Yeah. I oh, since you know we're gonna do shout outs. We own uh, El Medina Imports on West One Fifteenth. Yeah. I need to it's get over there. It's a beautiful import store. <laughs> <laughs> about we to have everybody. a lot of organic chicken. We do halal, which we mm-hmm. slaughter it a certain way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have all foods, hot foods, ready to go, shawarma, and a lot of candy, which is bad. I tell my sister that's not good <laughs> since your sister, the dentist, is across the street. <laughs> Ma, say, and, and honestly, well, thank you, Synergy of Life, for yeah. Mr. Kev, for what is radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all cute. Yeah, that's all cute. You <laughs> might mute the, the microphones. Oh, can I say one more thing? T- 30 before, seconds. Before, 30 no, seconds. No, say, no I, 10 I, I, seconds. I would like to say happy birthday. Happy My birthday, birthday was Charles. yesterday. Yes. I don't well, care if it was yesterday. I didn't talk to you yesterday. You know, you just ungrateful, man. I'll mute my mute my microphone. <laughs> but at the same time, because Dr. Ali, she we don't have her for so much so much longer. So I got I had a couple more questions to ask her before we before I let her go. Um, and again, because when he mentioned diabetes, and that's important, can people don't understand how. Your dental health is connected to diabetes. Talk about that. I mean, how does how do you go from oh man, I got a healthy mouth now my now my my teeth are starting to break down. All of a sudden now I have diabetes. How does that happen? You know, I don't think diabetes happens from teeth. I I, I you know it does and it doesn't. Like uh, we all work together. Our whole I'm body. Say, but it, it does contribute though. Right. Like if we work together. Uh, mm-hmm. The whole body is one. Um, for example, like the heart, bacteria from the mouth mm-hmm. travels to the heart. That's right. why, you know, when people say, well, do you have a heart murmur? We used to pre-medicate mm-hmm. because all the bacteria goes to the heart. 
uh, diabetes also, like you're having all this bacteria in your mouth. And... Go ahead. You know, <laughs> as, as uh, you know, the whole body does work as one unit. So this bacteria in the mouth and the stress, like from teeth pain, mm -hmm. I think contributes to the disruption of your immune system. Mm. And basically, that's what diabetes is. is it's a, you know, it's a disruption of your immune system a little bit. Uh, and diet. Right. Well, people are eating high, like you go back to your Kool-Aid issue. Right. Like, you know, what do we eat? It's, it's, that's what contributes to diabetes. Right. Is our eat, our food, um, the Kool-Aid, the candies. It's cheaper, I think, to buy all this junk food than a proper meal. And people aren't watching what their kids are eating. So all this sugar intake creates the diabetes. Right. But also, in the meantime, it's ruining the teeth. Mm -hmm. And then once you do get diabetes, your immune system is weakened, and it kills the gums. Wow. It so basically, it's our food intake that contributes to bad teeth. Mm -hmm. And diabetes. <laughs> right. But see, again, in, even with that, because some people will still say, okay, well, that don't make sense. How did my teeth have anything to do with me, you know, possibly, you know, getting diabetes? And of course, like you said, no. It's a contributor, too. Because right. Because like our, so what makes your teeth bad is what we eat. Mm -hmm. and, and lack of brushing and flossing. Right. So mo what do most people eat? I mean... You know, I do own the store, and half of their intake is candies. Right. Candies, chocolates, cookies. And what happens is they're eating all of this. Mm -hmm. And it's sitting on the teeth. And the high intake of sugar, that's what creates the diabetes. And also genetics plays a form, too. Right. Now, okay. You can see, that's why I don't have to ever come up with questions. You you give me questions when you mention that because when you talk about medical history, you know, again, as an ambassador for the American Heart and Stroke Association, that's one of the main things we promote. Know your medical history. Did your mother, your father, you know, cousin, or you know, your, your aunt, or, you know, any immediate family member have these medical issues? You mentioned genetics. Talk about that. How does that contribute to? Actually, genetics... Um... Really, even like in teeth, I think people with parents of like gum disease are mm -hmm. a little bit more prone to get it. People with parents with high cavity index, they're most likely to get high cavity index also. I think it's a transfer of bacteria mm -hmm. between mother and child. And genetics, of course, plays a big role. Like, my father's a diabetic, so I always go get checked for diabetes. Right. I mean, that's why I have to really watch what I eat. I don't let everything in my mouth because it's a big probability of me getting diabetes. Mm hmm And what was the question? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Let's go no, no. So I mean... genetics does play a role. You do have to know what your parents' history is 100%. Right. Like, I'm aware of my parents' history, and I do get tested for theirs. Like, my father had a heart attack, so I get myself checked for cholesterol, for other things. Um, and I'm always at the gym because I don't want what happened. Like, I try, I'm trying to prevent it because mm -hmm. I know I'm probably at a high risk for these problems. Right. I am at a high risk because of my father. Yeah, makes sense. So that's why I don't. I, I I try to avoid everything so I, you know, reduce the risk of it. Right. And that's why people do ask, you know, more medical history than more than dental history. Mm -hmm. Like we really don't ask um, to that degree. Right. Well, I know when I went into the dentist, there was like three columns of things to ask. What do you have? Asthma? You well, have no, no. This? We have like 10 columns. We have to ask what you have. Right. Not like what your dad has or mom, but for medical, right. like my doctor, like he knows my father's a diabetic uh, and had heart, so he's always checking me for that because mm -hmm. I'm at a high risk. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, because last thing, because somebody said, well, okay, well, I, 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 know, I know I need now. 
that I've heard Dr. Hyatt and she told me how bad my mouth is. And I know my parents have a medical history of, um, like I said, the gum disease, the, the dental disease. Because my, again, most people hear the word medical history. They don't think about dental. They think about everything outside of dental. And according from what you said, it's possible. Now, is this statistically speaking or um, is this something that's been proven that a, a parent, when parents have certain dental issues, it's possible that their children can have it? Yes. Uh, you know, like in dental school, they were saying, like, you know how when parents lick their kid's pacifier to clean and then they're giving it to their kids? Right. Well, that's bacteria being transferred. So they're, they're transferring these organisms to their children. Wow. So parents, it's called water. <laughs> Rinse it off with Absolutely. some water. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, you're transferring um, bacteria. Wow. Well, so you don't want to do that. And then they carry their parents' habits. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad never went to the dentist. Why should I? Like, my dad never took us. Um, see? And that's exactly, God, see, that, that's what, and if I, if I, I respect them, I love them, but that's, again, and, and I don't want to hold you over because I can. I'm doing 2015. I'm going to stick to my one hour. I tell every guest one hour, and I want to make sure, but you just, just drummed up a whole, a tons more questions. You just gave me more questions to ask, but again, that's something we talk about in our program, and not, except not just on mine, with Synergy of Life, and just any other program in conversation, the fact that when parents have bad habits and their children watch this, they take on these bad habits, and it's like, okay, well, you, I don't, I don't recognize this. I don't know why I should go do it because my parents didn't do it. So that means again, you're telling if I, we are in agreement on this, parents need to practice good dental, have have good dental practices, so that way their children will also have good dental practices, and they can pass it on to theirs and theirs and so on, and it won't be again. Versus, like you said, like what well, brother um, Newbay was saying, it won't be a more of a prevention. It'll be more of a pre-prevention. Or so, yeah, it'll be more of a prevention versus a, um, what, a, a, it's too late, I guess. Before it's too right. Um, that's what we want to try to get it is in prevention. Mm -hmm. Is it 10 minutes? Well, yeah, we, yeah, we said because oh, last thing that I was gonna say before we um I let you go, um, because it's kind of just real quick. Because some people say, well, when it comes when I go to dental, um, high Hyatt Dental, because of course you said you have one in Mentor, you have one here in Cleveland. As briefly as possible, but kind of let people know what they can experience when they walk into one of your dental offices. What, what can they expect? Oh, uh, let's say for my children, because you said the children are comfortable, because I did see some of the pictures. And you all have a beautiful... Um, kids room. Kids room, we right. Have cars on the uh, wall as a mural. Right. And it seems like the adults seem to like it a little bit more. So they get into <laughs> it. You know, and these are the things I tried to do is make, like, one room, I placed a beach. Mm-hmm. You know, so people, and I put TVs in the rooms, like to tune out noise for right. them. A lot of people don't like the drill sound. They don't like this. They don't like that. I try to make it fun for them, you know, relax them, you know, talk about other things except dental. And I try to make it as pain-free and happy as possible so they will return. Right. I don't want to make it a bad experience for anybody I do want everybody to return and enjoy coming to the dentist because it is actually a cool thing. You know, when I'm cleaning teeth and you're, you leave out and your teeth are a little whiter, a little cleaner, you're ready to kiss your spouse. I mean, I, I think I'm making <laughs> people happy. I don't want to feel like, oh, my God, I'm coming to the dentist. But what's happening is they're coming in with pain. So they're already coming in with a negative connotation of the dentist. Right. But really, we're trying to help and we're trying to put you on a program to come and maintain. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, and, and okay, goofy question, because I do, like, I have at least one goofy question out of every show. How many adults do you see coming in watching SpongeBob? <laughs> None. Okay, well, then that means I don't need to come because I watch SpongeBob. SpongeBob makes me more comfortable. I like to, go, I to watch know, cartoons. Like we give the patients a remote. Uh, a lot of people, um, you know, now it's the age of iPhones and all these right, phones. Right. They're always texting and this and that and Facebooking <laughs> and, you know, I let them do whatever really makes them comfortable. 
Okay. Whatever makes them happy to soothe them. Like I let their spouse or their mother or their sister and come. If that makes them wow. happy, go for it. You know, I just try to make them whatever to get comfortable where they can do it. See, now, again, when you always say, I, I, sometimes people like do that comparison. So what's the difference between this dinner office and that dinner office? What you just said right there is important because I'm going to lie to you. I'm the type of person. I don't like needles. I don't like to get stuck. I mean, I do do something on a regular basis where I have to. But then in a medical situation, I don't like to get stuck. So if, if I can have somebody in there with me so I can kind of be distracted, you know, as long as they don't do nothing, it's going to make me my home. It's going to make it worse. But the fact that you said that you allow family members or whoever, you know, of course, as long as they don't disrupt the practice. Yeah, they can't but, disrupt. <laughs> but that is important. Again, that's why you should go and visit Dr. Haya Ali and either in her mentor office or at her um, Cleveland office. And again, because yeah, before we go, tell people how they can find out more about Hyatt Deno. Like I said, you mentioned the com- we mentioned the commercial, which um, well, Joey um, had. I'm very big on Facebook, and I am responsive. A lot of people always write me, and I do answer any time, unless I'm with a patient. But I'll answer right after. Right. You can visit Hyatt H A Y A T Dental Center, and. You don't have a um, website yet? I do. Uh, it's HyattAliDental.com. Okay. Or ClevelandDentalWork.com. Mm-hmm. And we do answer any questions. And then a lot of people email me because they get it through my website, AliDentist at AOL.com. And I do answer immediately. And they can always call the office. Are you on Twitter? I am, but I don't really get on I it much. I don't tweet all. <laughs> I, I'm on it. I have it, and then I'm on, on Instagram. At oh, you, are, is, you flex on Instagram? I am on Instagram. <laughs> I have almost 2,000 followers. I'm not bad. Uh, oh, yeah, you're killing us right now. You're killing us. You know, I, I really do social media. I try to keep up with the latest. And you can always call us at 216-476-9930. And I do want to stress, we do a lot of, most of our questions is, do you take this insurance or that? We do take 90% of insurances, Ohio Medicaid, uh, CareSource. United Healthcare? United Healthcare, Paramount, Molina, uh, Cigna, MetLife. I'm a preferred provider, and I did that in order so, you know, people have somewhere to go and we don't kill their pocket. Right. I'm there to make you healthy, not become a millionaire all in one year. Because hey. I know that's what you think of doctors. I got it. <laughs> no, they usually think of that of preachers. But no, I'm messing. <laughs> and I don't preach. Uh, I just really try to help get people up to good health. Right. Well, and I... we are family. One thing, uh, you know, you don't have to take your kids somewhere. You don't have to take this. You know, we are family. We're geared for the whole family. Children, adults, grandparents. One-stop shop. Right. Well, I tell you what, yeah, my time is up with you, unfortunately, because I, otherwise I could talk to you to death for another 30 minutes. But that's going to cost me. It might cost me a little. It might cost me a lot. But it's going to cost me. So I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you for joining me live in the studio and giving this great information about dental health, as well as, again, talking to us about your practice. I, I want to say I'm going to come by and stop by. I'm not going to not get in the chair. But... <laughs> Just come by and say hi. Yeah, I just come by and say yeah. That that I, I feel better about that. I yeah. come by and say hi. A lot of people just come and say hi. Yeah, they do. They well, like to see me. The thing is, I, I no. We well, I'll put it this way. We we're working on something else to really get out. Cause honestly, like I said, definitely um, big shout out to Joy Ruffin with the commercial. But we definitely want to get out and sh- support and let people know how important it is. I know all everybody in my circle. Because then again, we have the same circle. So <laughs> it's like everybody is, in the circle has been there. And probably, have you been to Tomo yet? Of course. Ah, see, you got one up on me. They're my patients. <laughs> we'll take you to Tomo. Yeah, I, I, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But I tell you what, I'm going to let you go. We're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about Martin Luther King. Well, matter of fact, I'm going to talk about the um, service that I went to yesterday where Laura Cowan was actually, um, she was honored. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about Dr. King because, of course, you can't have a, doc, a, a a show on Dr. King or, yeah, how do you say, how is it, the proper term is 
Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You can't do that without talking about Martin Luther King or some of his work. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial break. This is Cleveland Inspirations. I'm your host, Mr. Yancey. Stay tuned. Wow, it's already 8.30. 